Yeah, you guys just saw that. So make sure that you like this video and subscribe and encourage me to make more. Welcome back, everyone. We are back after almost 10 days away. Lately, I've been trying to make at least two videos a week, but Hurricane Ida put the kibosh on that one for me. Thanks to everyone that reached out to check on me during storm time. I am very appreciative, and in my case, that this time I only ended up with some tree branches in my yard and it rained repeatedly for about six days straight. The worst I can complain is my inability to get anything done outside and make any new videos. But you know, some of my friends through Louisiana didn't fare quite so well. I got quite lucky. Thanks everybody again for checking on me. Well, in the breaks between rain, I did at least try to get the CV joints and axles greased up so that I could start assembling them when the rain finally did stop. I really hate doing CV joints. These were older, but they were sitting out in the weather just disassembled. They're probably good to use, but the grease was all weathered and nasty. So I got some new grease, disassembled, and cleaned these things out. Well, we got something sent to us this week from a company named EDOE, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's what it looks like to me, EDOE. And yeah, I did rehearse that a couple times. <laughs> but what it is, is a camping table, and they told me they could only get it in black, but I really, really wanted a blue one, and they did the best they could to pull strings for me to make sure that uh, that's exactly what I got. This thing is, appears to be quite durable. Uh, it opens up just like that. You then fold your little sticks over, uh, which way? This way, into place. There you go. And then you lay your top down onto it, and it goes on this way, like this here. Click, click, and click, click. And that's it, you now have a camping table set up. This thing is incredibly strong. I don't know that I would try standing on it because uh, I fear for hurting myself and possibly stabbing myself, but these legs are incredibly strong. This is the first thing I do is I tried to bend these things and uh, I honestly expected them to be made out of some, some kind of cheap pot metal or really, really thick steel like something you get from Harbor Freight, but this one is not. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using it today as a tool table because I'm not going camping for probably another month or two. <laughs> but this is likely going to be going with me. It's just uh, super convenient, looks like a decent little product. And well, today it's gonna to be my tool caddy. There is a sheet of plastic that's on it. I am going to leave that on there today just because we're working with CV joints and a really greasy dirty. And I think the less I can get this thing dirty, the better condition it's gonna be in overall. Not that it looks like it's too hard to, to clean. It uh, appears it's all aluminum construction except for the little corner uh, pieces, which are plastic. Of course, you can find links down below to the product down in the video description. If you'd like to get one yourself, uh, well, I do recommend them. I think it's certainly good. It looks like a decent product. Then when the rain finally quit after more than six days, I spent a little time getting these axles installed. The only way to keep clean while doing CV joints is to not do them at all. Have someone else do them for you in their shop. As I said, I really hate these things. Just I hate these things. Such a mess. Crash discovered, however, that she really likes axle grease. I kept having to chase her off. Stay out of that. <laughs> Don't eat that. And wipe her mouth out. Such a sick little creature. I, I would have never imagined that a duck would have a taste for molly grease. Nasty. Well, the axle's bolted on pretty smoothly without any problems. So there's a little to talk about here. These are stock VW Beetle parts and an otherwise stock VW Beetle rear suspension. Once they were installed, I wiped down all the excess mess and then later sprayed them down with some degreaser and hosed them off. Looks like that finally burned out. Yep. All the gasoline that was in there, bad gas, cleaning gas, and uh, all grease from the CV joints <laughs> I threw in there it appears to be all burned up. It's just some ash in the bottom because I did throw a stick in there. <sighs> yeah, I can actually see the bottom of the can. So it turned to carbon, everything burned off, even the uh, paraffin waxes that were in the grease.
a lot of folks were saying that I should replace or remove the return spring that's on here. That is a critical component and it, it makes almost no pressure. I mean, right now, you see this? That's pulling against the spring. That's like 1% of the actual pull. All of the, uh, the force that's required is to actually push that pressure plate in. Now that spring is there for a reason. What that spring does is it pulls the throwout bearing away from the pressure plate. And if that's not there, it's allowed to bump into the pressure plate or even remain up against the pressure plate, which will turn the throwout bearing full time instead of giving it a break. And what will happen is if you ride this thing or drive it, even if it's a Volkswagen Beetle, which this isn't, I guess it kind of still is, but still isn't if you know what I mean, it will cause a throwout bearing to explode. Ask me how I know. I've taken apart an engine before when the clutch went stupid and discovered that the throw-up bearing was all over the inside of the bell housing and it was just ball bearings everywhere. And not only that, but the fork, the throw-out fork, one of the legs was busted on it too. And that was all because a spring was broken. That's where the problem started and I failed to address it. Now, you may not have as bad of a problem as I did in that situation, but in this case, that spring is staying on because that has a reason. But as I said, this thing is stiff but it's not too stiff to ride. So I'll be able to test it. Crash, what the hell are you doing? Are you eating grease again? I am gonna kick your ass. I had to wipe her mouth out a minute ago because she had a, a blob of grease in it. Get out of there. <laughs> anyway, this clutch cable actually needs to be tightened up a little bit because it has just too much play in it before it starts to engage the clutch. So I'll get rid of that, or at least some of it anyway. There needs to be just a little bit and I don't remember what the spec is, but the spec is actually measured at the clutch pedal in the car. So I'll have to come back here and do the math and figure out what the difference is. In addition to that, this throwout lever that's on here, Volkswagen produced them in two different varieties. This just happens to be the long one. Now I could put a shorter one in, of course, but that's going to make the clutch harder to squeeze. Um, ooh, look at that. Engine nuts loose. I forgot to tighten one up. Ha! Guess I have to fix that. Anyway, that is the longer one. Uh, again, I could put the shorter one on if I wanted to be a masochist and, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, hurt myself. But, um, yeah, we're going to leave that long lever on there alone, as is. Some people talked about hydraulic clutches. Well, guess what? Two videos ago, I already did that. <laughs> so you guys haven't caught up if you missed that one. Hydraulic clutch is still an option that's on the table, but due to cost, we're not pushing into that. Again, I think I can ride it with this setup. I think this is gonna work for me. So we're gonna test it out and we're gonna see. But of course, first I need to get a shifter in there. I found Eleanor's original shifter. This may work on here. It just happens to have a, a wacky bend in it. And that may actually be kind of close to where I need it to be on this uh, ATVW. I'll have to lengthen the handle though, about six inches. And I'll probably wanna put a short throw shifter kit on it if I do that. But this gives me something to operate with eh, because I don't have a bus shifter that I'd really like to put on here. Anyway, we're gonna grab Crash, who's underneath here eating grease again, and we're gonna find out exactly what's in her mouth. <laughs> so I got back to how I wanted to mount the shifter. Now this is actually Eleanor's original shifter, and I really like the factory bend in it, but unfortunately it bent to 90 degrees off from where it needs to be. I'll have to cut and turn it and re-weld it if this is what I plan to use. So I had to make a shift rod to accommodate this, so I started hacking down a rotten old shifter rod that I had out in the yard. I cut the rear end of it off first. I will be reusing this. Then I measured out the remainder of the shaft to figure out approximately how long I wanted it to be. Then I cut that sucker right down. Peace pipe, anyone? <laughs> I'd rather have me a space cake. Well, this little short guy ought to fit properly, methinks. So I got a brand new shift coupler that I won in a raffle, and yes, it's a red one. These actually work quite well for me, and there's one in Ruby that's been there for the past eight years without a failure. So I really don't want to hear anybody telling me that these things died prematurely, because in this case, that might be the only urethane part that I use on my Volkswagen, and it's been good to me. But I do always carry a spare just in case. And what you didn't see off camera was I welded a bolt into the shifter end, and here's why. Well, here's what I came up with. Might not look like a whole lot yet, but while I screw this together here, it'll make a whole lot more sense when you look at it. This is my shifter shaft. It's not but about, oh, about a foot long. And then on the end here, I have my shift coupler. And it goes into the stock end. And what's new is this nut in here that spins. It allows me to lengthen or shorten the rod. And I can tighten it down 
at any angle that I wish. So that way it allows me to put this all together. I wasn't about to start making measurements and putting this thing together, putting all the welds on it, and then discovering that nothing works and it needed an adjustment. So why don't I just build the adjustment into it to begin with? So that's what I put together here. I probably should put a washer between here and there, but uh, otherwise this looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to clean this shifter shaft because all these uh, rusty pock marks in here are leaving burrs. And when I push that into the bushing, it's gonna wear that bushing out. Stroke, stroke, stroke. Yeah, this is about ready to go in. I'm just gonna clean it up with the sander real quick. I guess belt sander would probably do the trick. And then uh, we'll put it together. This all looks good. And no sooner I was about to install it, yep, again. Hey, David. Rain, rain, and rain. <laughs> rain. You think that after six days of hurricane band rains that we've had enough, but I guess that just wasn't the case at all. So I put everything away and came back out the next day. So I grabbed a stock shifter rod and my shortened shifter rod for a comparison. It's amazing just how much of it I had to remove. And the end on the one that I hacked up was pretty ugly. I was quite surprised that it did fit the coupler in it, despite it looking like it was chewed on by somebody. Well, I went to install the shift bushing into the ATVW chassis, and that damn thing just fell apart. This was a new part. I have no idea why it yellowed so quickly and turned to crap. Probably because it was made in China, like most of our parts are nowadays. This may explain why I replace them in Ruby so frequently, and yeah, 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 I know there's a brass bushing that someone else makes that I can replace this part with, but it's a little expensive for what it is in my opinion, and it's just plain noisy. In something like the Fastback, I can really hear the shift rod transmit engine and driveline noise into the cabin when the bushing goes bad, and it's just metal on metal contact. And if the shift rod were sitting in a brass bushing, well, it's exactly that. On the ATVW, that noise will probably not even matter anyway, but then again, this project is meant to be built from junk, so it's just too expensive and not in the budget. So I messaged Wild Bill to see if he had one of these stock nylon bushings around, and sadly he did not. But he shared with me the method to make one from the top of an old oil bottle. I was quite surprised that the shifter shaft fit in here so perfectly. Well, I'm pretty good about throwing out my old oil bottles around here, so I, I just couldn't find one. But I did come across an old bottle of Dexron, which I have no idea why it's even in my garage at all. I saved the fluid in another bottle anyway, just in case I needed it, and then this bottle donated its neck. So this suggestion coming at me both saved me money and saved time, perfect for this project. Thank you, Wild Bill. So I put my custom-made shifter bushing in the tunnel, and had a little bit of fit just to get it in there, right? And then, well, yep, I dropped it. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> It just took a couple tries to get it in there, and when it finally went in, it went in just like it was a stock part. Absolutely amazing. Then I had to come up with a method to feed the short and shift rod through the tunnel. This isn't possible as it would be with a stock rod because it's just too damn short. So I can't just push it in from the front of the chassis and expect it to go through. So I bolted an old throttle cable to the end, dropped the rod into the tunnel, then fed the cable back through the bushing, then pulled the cable out from the back, greasing it as it went in. Then I slipped my shift rod end in, and installed the coupler. With the transmission in neutral, the shifter rod cup looked pretty well centered in the shifter flange. This is a good position to tighten it down, and well, that was easy. So I went to bolt on my shifter, and I noticed the spring had gone missing. It'll probably still work, but it just won't have a proper reverse lockout, so I'll just have to be extra careful for the time being until I replace this shifter or find the spring. I installed the shifter without it, and I hope that it turns up. Okay, that appears to be neutral. First, second, third, fourth, up over this way, in, that's reverse. Looks like it works. Now all I need to do is uh, turn the, uh, the bends in this thing. Probably cut it right about here and then bring it up so it comes up to here and then extend it some. And I think it'll give me what we need. Well, with all that done, it occurred to me that I may just have enough of the basics installed to get a test ride out of this thing. So maybe that's what I should do.
Well, it works. <laughs> well, it seemed to take off pretty good, but I did have a few issues with it when I got up to the front yard. I didn't bother to come in the backyard to go grab the camera to set it back up and rock it down the street because, well, things just weren't working right. Uh, I was having some issues that I just didn't get fixed before it started to get dark, but I'm just glad that I managed to get it limped back into the backyard where it was before. So the reverse gear is actually working pretty well. A couple of observations here. If I try to start it in gear, I could probably end up murdering myself. I may use a fasten safety belt light switch on the transmission to disable the start button when it's in gear. I think that would be a nice feature and it's probably a clever way to use it. A small safety item like that goes a long way. It's always been embarrassing to have your VW lurch forward because you forgot to push in the clutch or take it out of gear when you start it and all your friends are watching you. <laughs> And once again, I'd like to thank my friends over there at EDUE for sending me this camping table. Of course, I used it as a work table, but it proved itself to be very durable and extremely convenient during the progress of the ATVW. You'll probably be seeing more of this thing in my videos, I'm sure. Meanwhile, I shall break it back down and keep it in Ruby's trunk for my next camping trip. So go get yourself one. They even come in other colors. Links are down below in the video description. Thank you so much, you guys, for supporting them and me. So before my next video, I'll be making a few adjustments, and when you see me return, I hope I should have a proper test ride. So look forward to that in the next video. I'll even take it down the street to my favorite parking lot racetrack. Yeah, it's going to be fun, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to tug your dangle wheelie so that way you get updates every time I upload a video. Thanks a lot once again, you guys, and we'll see you next time.